If you're interested in learning more about implementing DGP over IPsec, grab a seat in our Advanced Juno Security course. For full details, just visit www.juniper.net slash courses. And take good notes in class as this subject appears on the Juniper Network Certified Professional Security Exam. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside of Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the BGP over IPsec learning bite. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, why use BGP over IPsec? What is this by me? Well, there's two major things. First of all, we're going to secure BGP communications between gateways. And then we're going to secure traffic between hosts. BGP is going to direct that traffic through the IPsec tunnel for us. There are some possible issues that you need to look out for. With IPsec, look out for mismatching policies and proposals with your Phase 1 and Phase 2 tunnels. Then look out for mismatching pre-shared keys. If you do suspect a mismatched pre-shared key, simply just reset it. Then make sure that IKE is permitted in the security zone that houses the interface you're using for the IKE pairing. Then be aware that you might have to configure some security policies to permit certain traffic, such as the ST0 interface is oftentimes placed in a separate zone. You need to configure security policies to permit traffic that travels through that zone. Then you might need to configure intra-zone policies if you're using the loopback interface as the IKE pairing interface and you have a remote peer that is initiating the IPsec tunnel. Then there might be some BGP related issues. Be aware that different BGP parameters have to match such as autonomous system and the BGP type whether it be internal or external. So here is the example we will be using in the demo. We have a hub and spoke VPN where SRX1 is the hub and Remote 1, Remote 2, and Remote 3 are the spoke devices. Remote 2 and Remote 3 are already configured and working with IPsec and BGP. However, the Remote 1 device is not under our administrative control. It is configured to peer with us, peer with the SRX1 device using IPsec and BGP. However, we don't know those parameters. So we have to use troubleshooting tools on SRX1 to discover the parameters for Remote 1. One other quick thing to point out is that since this is a hub and spoke VPN, we are using the loopback interface on SRX1 for the IKE pairing address. And then between SRX1, Remote 2, and Remote 3, there is an internal BGP session using AS65111. All right, let's jump to the CLI. All right, here's the CLI, SRX1, Remote 2, Remote 3. Notice Remote 1 is not there. That's because in this scenario, we don't have access to it. And then the host device. The host device is a special Junos device split up into multiple virtual routers so we can use it to test communication between the different host devices. For example, I'm going to attempt to ping to host 1 from host 0. And I do have static host mapping set up so I can just type in the actual just host name for the IP address so I don't have to type that out. And communication doesn't work there and it's not expected to work. We don't have anything set up to facilitate that communication. Host 2, ping host 2 from host 1, and host 3 from host 0. That doesn't work, but we're going to set up these uh, SRX devices in a manner that will allow that communication. So first, let's look at the IKE associations, phase 1 tunnels. Everything's good. IPsec tunnels, everything's good for the remote 2 and remote 3. Those are those associated IP addresses for those remote sites. Remote 1, it's not there, and that's understandable. We don't know those parameters yet. We have to figure that out. So let's jump into configuration mode, and I do want to show you the security zones configuration. We are peering IKE on the loopback address here, which is located in the internet zone, and our external interface here for SRX1 is the Gigi001 interface. And we look at the rest of the security configuration, like the policies. There's no policies currently configured. And so just keep that in mind as we're going through this. And also, I do want to point out that we have the ST0 interface in its own VPN zone. So it's in a separate zone. 
So keep that in mind, especially with security policies as we go along. So let's jump into IKE uh, configuration, set the trace options flag for IKE, so we can hopefully find out what the pairing address is for remote one. And then uh, I'm going to run, I use the run command to clear the KMD log file. That's where the, the IKE logs go by default when you do trace options, just to clear out any stale information and commit that configuration. So let's just quickly look in the KMD log file. And there's nothing there. And that's okay. Let's, uh, I'm, I'm going to pause the video for a minute just so we can uh, hopefully get some information in the log file. All right, we've had that uh, the video pause for a minute or so. So let's, uh, let's check that log file again. And there's nothing there. And that's kind of by design. And I'm going to explain this, but remember how earlier, just a few minutes ago, or a minute or so ago, talked about the interfaces and the zones. Notice that we're pairing with the loopback interface. We know that's what uh, remote one is attempting to pair with as far as IKE goes. That's what the other remote devices are pairing with too. And we talked about how there was no policies. If it's a loopback pairing and the other side is initiating the connection, we need to set up a policy for intra zone traffic because what's happening is that traffic's coming into SRX1 on Gigi001 and then Gigi001 needs to pass that to the loopback interface which requires an intra zone policy. Now the reverse it's not necessary because if SRX1 initiates the connection which it's doing to remote 2 and remote 3 then it just sends it it initiates it from loopback 0 and then it goes out Gigi001. In that instance since SRX1 is initiating the traffic a policy is not needed. And so we're going to have to configure a policy here to get see anything. So let's edit the policy sections from zone internet to zone internet. Policy name, we're just going to call this IKE. Set match source address. We don't know the source address yet, so we're going to say any. Destination address, that's the loopback address. I've already set a address book entry for that loopback address. And then the application is going to be junos-ike. And then we're going to permit that, and then we're going to commit. All right, so let's check that log. And we have some good information in here. We can actually see this right away. We see a 1050.70.2 in a couple places. There's a good chance that's our, our remote uh, address. And so let's go ahead and uh, remote IKE appearing address. So let's configure that. We're going to copy R2, make a new gateway, and then edit gateway R-1, the new gateway. And we're going to delete that address that's currently there and set the new address. And then we're going to do basically the same thing with the VPN uh, IPsec configuration. All right, then we're going to edit that. There we go. And we're just going to do a replace pattern with R-2, make it R-1. And then we're going to delete those uh, trace options for IKE because they won't be needed anymore. Hey, we have a new security association for phase one. That's awesome. And phase two as well. That's great. We were able to establish our tunnels. And so we got that part taken care of. Now we got to take care of BGP. So there's a little more to do here. We're not done yet. Show you what we have here. Well, let's make sure those BGP sessions are up. And we do. We have BGP sessions with remote two and remote three. But now we need to figure out what remote one is. And I do want to show you the ST0 interface address, you know, Notice this is a slash 16. You're not going to be in the situation. It's going to be, you know, you could try to ping, just guess something in that subnet. If it's a slash 24, maybe, but slash 16, not a chance. There's just way too many possibilities. So we do need to break this down a little more to figure out what's going on. And so to actually do this, I'm going to monitor the interface, the ST0 interface. And with this, we have a little bit of information in here, but this is just from the already configured uh, neighbors. But with this, we're just going to monitor whatever is coming into that ST0 interface, because that's what we have configured you know, through the tunnel. So we should see something pop up here shortly. All right, we just got a bunch of information there, and we have something. Look at this. This 10.1.238.144, that's more than likely our pairing address. Let's go ahead and copy that address, and then let's get out of this, and let's configure that. You know, and something we don't know whether that's internal or external. So we'll get a little more information here with that. Let's commit that. I'm going to pause this so that can, uh, takes a little bit of time a lot of times for BGP to sync up. So let's pause the video recording. We'll check it here in a minute. All right, it's been a little while. Let's check this. Yeah, it's still in the active state. That's a bad sign. So let's actually configure some trace options. Let me just go up one level, set those trace options. 
I'm going to flag the open file or the open flag in detail. And then with the trace options, I'm going to set a file of bgp.log. And let's commit that. All right, so let's look in that log file. We have a lot of good information in here. And look at this. We've got a peer mess match. Here's our, here's our remote one peering address for BGP. And bad peer AS number 6551 is supposed to be their peer AS. So more than likely, this is an external BGP session. So what we want to do here is let's uh, deactivate group BGP, that neighbor, and set group BGP dash external. Set this up with the new guy. Configure the local address is the same. Should use the SD0 interface, but just to be safe. And we'll set this as 65111. And that should be all we need there. Go ahead and commit that. All right, so I'll pause the video again, and let's see if the, uh, the session forms. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at that again. It's been a couple of minutes. Still nothing. That's not a good sign. So let's look at the log file. Go all the way down to the newest stuff, and ah, look at this. We do have more information. We have that remote one peer AS number. It's telling us that's the correct AS number. Receive notification. Bad AS number. Ah, this tells me that it's an internal BGP session. That's uh, definitely strange, but possible for sure. So let's go ahead and deactivate or just delete group BGP external and go back into that BGP IP set group. And let's activate that neighbor. And then let's set that neighbor. We can still do internal BGP here. We can do a local AS, 65111. And then we can do a peer AS of 65111. And then commit that. Look at the sessions. OK, I'm going to pause it again why, that's, why it tries to initiate the session. All right, let's check that again. And we have success. That is up. That is awesome. Let's look at the route. We have all three routes. That's exactly what we want. Well, let's look at the uh, other remote devices. And it's in the connect state. Oh, that's not a good sign. We have remote 2 to the remote 3 in the connect state. There's something definitely wrong here. And the problem is we're running short on time. So the problem is we jump back to SRX1. Uh, I'm going to show you the zones first. The uh, SE0 interface is in a different zone, a VPN zone. So with a hub and spoke VPN here, we actually do need to configure an intra zone policy for that VPN zone. We're just going to do a source address, any, destination address, any, application, any. We're just going to allow anything between those guys and then s permit this. We're going to commit that. Then we'll jump back to a remote 2 and take a look at that. So let's check that again. And that's up. That's awesome. So now we just need to configure a uh, remote 1 site here for BGP. Configure that local AS again. And then the remote. Then we just need to configure. Remote 3 in the same fashion. And commit that. And we'll jump back to Remote 2. Check that out. Great. We have that. Receiving those routes. Check it here. And as well there, we have all the BGP neighbors up. But before we test communication, we do have to do a little bit more of policies. We have to say from zone VPN to zone trust policy. We're just going to call this permit. We're just going to say source address any. Destination address, any as well, and application, any. We'll show that, and then we're going to copy this because we're going to reuse this policy because we're going to have to do one from trust to VPN zone to allow that other traffic. Go and commit that, and then let's jump to the host device to test that communication again. Peaking host 1 from host 0. Yeah, success. That's good. Host 2 from host 0. Success again. Awesome. And then host 3 from host 0. Again, working. That's perfect. And we, I want to test one last thing. I'm going to do a rapid ping just to look at the packets. And we're incrementing there. You know, we're getting decrypted, encrypted packets. It's going through the tunnel. It's perfect, exactly what we want. All right, so that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed BGP over IPsec, and then we went through a scenario and did a few things there with troubleshooting. And so, as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And 
the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.